welcome to Exusia once more with Pastor Rachel. And today we are going to look at another aspect of agenda. But this time around, we're just focusing on how somebody who started out good suddenly derailed from the good path. Somebody who started out with humility became power crazy. So we are looking at the life of King Saul, who started out with humility. Remember we read 1 Samuel 9.21, after Samuel told Saul that you are going to be the king of Israel. And he's thinking, why are you talking crazy to me like that? I am from the least tribe of Israel. I am from the least family member, from the least family of Israel, of, that is I'm from Benjamin, the least tribe, from the least family in that tribe, and the least in my own family, and then I'm, I should now lead the whole country. You must be crazy. Why are you saying such a thing? So with so much humility, with so much, I don't deserve this. And all of a sudden, he became power crazy. He became something completely different. And think of this, God chose him. So he wasn't even chosen by man. So it's not like maybe a man made a mistake and picked this person. Which I've always looked at when I deal with people or when I'm counseling. I see a lot of times people will be like, oh, I made a mistake picking this person. I made a mistake giving this person opportunity. No, you did not. You give people opportunity just like God gives people opportunity. What can make somebody who starts off with humility, started off with nostalgia, started off with utmost awe, eventually become crazy and begin to do crazy stuff? So we're going to look at that today. And in doing that, we're going to look at King Saul again to look at the issues. What issues did he face or what issues um, were involved in his derailing, were involved in his going off and doing something crazy? The first thing we will notice will be disobedience and sin, unrepentant. King Saul was extremely disobedient, unrepentant. And like I was saying, but did God see this coming? Because some of us may, we may um, employ people or give people opportunity, appoint people, and then they suddenly just turn crazy and you're thinking I made a mistake. But in the case of King Saul, like I said earlier, God chose him and he had the heart of, oh me, and here he was doing crazy stuff. Same thing with Judas. There were other people who came to Jesus. Jesus didn't accept them, but he accepted Judas. And here we see Judas doing something crazy at the end of it. Was that a mistake? No. God will give people opportunity. God will give you an opportunity. God will make doors open for you. What you do with it has to do with you. You need to make it work out. That's why the Bible says that you should work out your salvation with fear and trembling. It's up to you what you do with opportunity. God will open doors for you. God will give you a second chance. What are you doing with it? So let's look at Saul again. The issues with Saul, like I said. Disobedience, sin, greed, resisting accountability, playing the blame game, disrespect for God and the prophet of God. Unrepentance was very, very much evident in all of the things that King Saul was doing you ask him for accountability or he's confronted, he's totally unrepentant, he's looking for a way out. So he had developed an evil heart. So let's look at what he did. Saul did not know how to follow his instructions. He had to just do things his own way. Everyone must follow his own logic. When the prophet said, in this battle that we are going to, in this battlefront, you've got to wait until I come and make a sacrifice first before the people engage in this battle. Of course, he said the people pressurized him and he did the sacrifice himself. Not that he skipped that aspect. He took, he arrogated an office that he was not called into to himself. He took that place of the prophet and went ahead and made the sacrifice. And when the prophet was asking, you did the sacrifice, you are a king, not a prophet. 
he passed the buck again. The people made me do it. I didn't intend to do it, but the people were agitated. So here we see him, like I said, unable to follow instruction. You could even say, okay, maybe he was afraid. Maybe this was impatient, right? Possible, okay. That was strike one, given. And then he went further into warfare with set of instruction of what to do. And he did his own thing again. So that is showing us somebody who is consistently disobedient, somebody who has an independent spirit and cannot follow instructions. You did one. It could be a mistake. Anybody could make a mistake. Fear, pressure, yes. Then a second one, what was that? Greed. The Bible tells us that all the things he was told to destroy, he looked at them and he thought, wow, these things are too nice. God must be out of his mind to say destroy them. But God, who called him, who gave him the instruction, knew what he was doing, knew what those things represented, knew what those things could do. They were condemned things. And King Saul looked into the condemned things and he began to pick and took them with him instead of carrying out the instruction. So we can see somebody who is obviously disobedient, somebody who is greedy, and somebody who cannot follow instruction, who, is, who has independent spirit. Based. But let's look at it. It goes beyond the disobedience and greed. So he was greedy. Those things were feeding his action. He didn't, he didn't master those the lust for things, the lust of the eye, they were beautiful, they were good, they were too good to be condemned. After Saul was also confronted by the prophet, what was the first thing he did? Let's read it again, First Samuel 15, 16 to 18. Now the Lord sent you, this was the prophet confronting Saul now. now. Now the Lord sent you on a mission and said, go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are consumed. In verse 19, he said, why, why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down on the spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord? So here Saul was facing query. After he refused to destroy all the things classified as condemned, contaminated, he spared those things that looked nice and destroyed the unuseful, not nice ones and claimed he destroyed oil. all of them. He lied. And when he was confronted about his greed, his disobedience, we could see his disrespect for God and for the prophet of God surfaced immediately. So not only did he, dis did he disobey, not only was he enriching himself, greed, and sparing the best of the condemned things with reasons. That's why I said that he was also lying to himself. Now God who appointed him didn't know any good anymore. He knew better than everybody. Here we now see him avoiding accountability. He was irresponsible. He could not face consequences. He could not even be true once and say, oh, it's true. This is why I did this. I'm sorry. Nothing like that. He was unrepentant. And he would not be accountable to anyone. Not even the prophet who appointed him. So was proud. So was highly irresponsible and would not be accountable. And so what did he do? He resisted accountability immediately. He lied about it. He would not accept consequences for all his action. Even at the end of all of this, when the prophet told him, the Lord has rejected you, the first thing he did was, that's all right, but please don't let the people know that has happened. Still stay with me and continue to worship with me so the people would think that God is still with me. He had lost it. Deception. Reputation. Impressionism. Keeping up appearances. That was what Saul was all about. And then at this time where he was being confronted, he began to pass the book. He began, to, because he was irresponsible, he began to blame other people. He was playing the, the blame game that we all play. And I pray that God will deliver you from that spirit of blame game in Jesus' name. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, she made me do it. Oh, he made me do it. Oh, what about I'm sorry? What about I'm going to look into this and I'm going to make a change? 
Saul, King Saul had a deep disrespect and disregard for God, like I said. He was insulting, that is, in his resisting accountability, he insulted the prophet's intelligence. He belittled the same authority that had put him in position in his telling blatant lie, deceptive ploy against the man of God. He's, he, he actually said, oh, when he was confronted with the evidence, why have you not done this? He said, huh? I did everything. What are you talking about? I destroyed the Amalekite. I destroyed all the things. The prophet said, okay, then what about the bleating of cattle that I'm hearing in the background? If you really destroyed everything, the people made me. If it was not deceptive, would he not have said that, oh, by the way, I kept some of those things. I didn't destroy them. And now that he, has, he had been found out, oh, the people pressured me into doing it. I didn't want to do it. The people said, oh, it would be too bad to destroy these things. We could actually use them for sacrifice. His weakness for acquisition, for fine things, took over. And his instinct, his irresponsibility took over also. And he began to give those excuses. And even if the people had pressured him, he already had the tendency. He already did not master his loss, did not master his taste. And that's why all he needed was just a little push. And so... Now he lied, the people pressured me. And when the, the prophet wouldn't buy that, the people pressured you, but you got a mandate. What about reminding the people of the mandate? What about reminding the people that this is why we're here and this is what we're doing? He was insulting the prophet's intelligence and integrity. Then he began to flatter the prophet. Then Samuel went to Saul, and Saul said to him, Blessed are you of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. But Samuel said, What is then the bleating of the sheep in my ears and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, Oh, they have brought them from the Amalekite for the people spared the best. See, he said the people, like I said, for the people spared the best of the sheep and, uh, and the oxen to sacrifice to the Lord your God. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. He set out to minimize his action and belittle God's servant. After the flattery and using of the spiritual jingle, the Christianese language that we use in order to gloss over sin, to gloss over disobedience, to gloss over greed, to, to twist God's word, after that did not work, he began to employ another ploy, deception. Oh, it will be good for sacrifice. He, was, he began to focus the prophet on what good could come out of his disobedience, of what good could come out of using condemned things. So more like he tried to confuse the prophet, but that did not work. That did not work. The prophet, thankfully, did not buy into that. So we can see that he was completely unrepentant. He was completely deceptive. He was completely disrespectful. That was why somebody who was that strong at the beginning, got derailed from his call, from his mission, and he entered into disfavor with God. He became rejected by God because he ran his own agenda and he will not repent because he was disrespectful to God and he will not repent. He was disobedient and he will not repent. Instead, he belittled God and insulted the prophet's intelligence. Saul was argumentative all through with audacity in maintaining his wrong. I believe and I pray that God will deliver anyone who has such a hardened heart from such in the mighty name of Jesus. That you will not run your own race. You will not, you will not justify evil actions. Instead, repentance will be your portion. You will repent, you will turn away from doing things that are not in line with God's mission for you from committing sin in Jesus' name. I pray that if you're operating in independent spirit, that now will be the time for you to have that opportunity to submit yourself unto God again and to say, I am sorry, and I need to go back to the heart of your mandate for my life. And I believe that your life will know true meaning of success, of favor in Jesus' name. Amen. So remember, disobedience, sin, greed, Resisting accountability, that is irresponsibility. Disrespect for God and authority. Unrepentance can make somebody 
become crazy, do crazy stuff, derail from their God-given mission and mandate. But it's not your own portion in Jesus' name. You will work against those things and things will work out for you in Jesus' name.